Hi and welcome to Serious Up Gaming, my name is Charlie and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the best games of this year. Now that's difficult to qualify, let's be honest, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the games that we have rated as part of the magazine a must play since January. So which ones have we taken a look at, have we played this year, that are the ones that we are recommending. We're basically halfway through the year already, where has the time gone? But now is a good time to set back and see what's my next game going to be? What in the collection do I need to own? Let's find out. First up, we have Praga Kaput Regni. I have no idea if I've said that right, but I can type it better than I can say it, it would seem. This is a game for one to four players and takes a 30 minutes plus to play. In it, you are going to be seeking the king's favour by building up Prague and trying to make it as wonderful as possible. You are a wealthy merchant and you want the king's favour. The game really rewards you for specialising in certain subjects, but you need to do so at the right time. If you over-specialise too early, you'll miss out on points later, and it won't be worth the specialisation in the first place. If you time it correctly, though, you will soar through with victory, and it's a really impressive and really rewarding way to play. But that, of course, is not your only choice. This is a game full of choices. And there's a temptation to focus on the building side to give you some resources, but again, over specialise in that side of things and you've unbalanced your game when you can't proceed as you wanted to. You're forever thinking of different ways to do things and forever having to adjust to the information that's available to you. You've also got a lot of decisions to make and a lot of responsibility. In fact, Ellie Dix, who reviewed this for us, uh, said that it feels like a trusting parent has just passed over the responsibility you've long craved. This game is basically all about you and all about your decisions. Each triumph is personally felt uh, and it makes it a great game to play and for us a must play. Second on the list is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now this one has recently been nominated for the Spiel des Jahres Award for the Kennerspiel, so we know we're in good company. Ultimately it is a sprawling game of finding what you've lost in terms of the Lost Cities. This game takes deck building and worker placement and smooshes them into one incredibly effective engine that allows you to propel through the game at your own pace. All the decisions feel like your own, you feel like you're making a real impact on the story that you're creating, and the story itself is really engaging and fun to play too. There's tension in defeating the Guardians, there's effort in building up your worker placement, everything is as it should be, and it is a fun game to play. Whilst this came out within the last year rather than this year specifically, um, it made the list of top games played in 2020 by our editor before making its way into the magazine. Next up is Vale Wraith. We are a big fan of Tristan Hall's games at the moment because they are coming out as must plays or yeses every time we go through them, which is super exciting. Uh, vale Wraith is set in a grayscale as well. So sometimes we look at artwork and we say, this is really vivid, this really invokes this. This does too, but in a very different way. It's an interesting world in which the universe has ended and what you're left with is this grayscale, which is in itself vivid. These games build stories around what it is that they're asking you to do um, and they make life a little bit more interesting too. How many games can you tell me are in black and white? Tell me, tell me. This is a full commitment to the solo experience, which is unusual for games, let's be honest, but very much welcomed over this last year. We were thoroughly impressed with this game and so we gave it a must play. And that's where it's on the list. Next up is Kotl. Kotl? Kotl. Kotl? Kotl? Somebody, somebody in the comments, please tell me how I'm supposed to say. Kotl? C-O-A-T-L. Kotl. Kotl. We go from a very grayscale veil wraith into something where the review starts by talking about how much colour we need in our life. And that's where Kotl slips in. It is an abstract pattern building set collection game. And not only that, it's also set in the Aztec setting, so you can imagine the colours are vivid and beautiful. That basically gives us an excuse to fit together these sort of punky plastic interlocking pieces that are really satisfying uh, in a really nice and fun way, and creating something that's quite beautiful at the end. Now, a lot of the fun in this game is its flexibility. There's a lot that you can do, there's a lot that you can choose to do, but it limits the analysis paralysis because there's still lots of choices. Nothing is too bad. You can't make too much of a bad decision, you only go forward, um, which makes it a nice game to play with a range of different people uh, and a really good sort of almost, almost an entry level game, but like entry level expert. Over gateway, just past gateway, that's that's where I'm putting this. Up next is Bees, and I'm really sad because I missed International Bee Day, which would have been the perfect time to talk about this. This is another game that we rated a must play, um, and one that is great for a huge range of people, much like its predecessor. Alexandra Sonichkina reviewed this for us, uh, and she described it as the perfect antidote for everything that is gloomy or sad. What more could you want from a game? And basically you're doing the things that bees do. 
you're going to have a little bee miniature, you're going to fly around, you're going to try and pick up pollen, you're going to try and make honey. Things are great in the life of a bee. And that's you. You're going to get those points based on the nectar you receive and the honeycombs that you build as a result of those. And while that sounds relatively simple, which of course it is, there are also complications to the rules that make it a little bit more competitive and a little bit more head scratchy and thinky. Can you put go here? Maybe, maybe not. Have you ruined it by taking this tactic? Maybe, who knows? You're gonna have to play it to find out how the best way to play really is. And all that just means it's a very well balanced game. There's a lot of choices. You can choose to make a lot of decisions and paths you can go down, um, but ultimately it is you that is in charge of what happens next. And that's a really empowering move. Combine that with how bright and colorful and friendly and lovely the topic it itself is. Uh, this is a really great one to pick up. And again, a must play game. I keep, I'm gonna keep saying it guys, must play games. Then after going from the, like the lovely little bumblebee that like hovers around and is just bum bubbling around everywhere. We then go to a fighting game. This is true fighting. Many have tried to do fighting before. Our reviewer thinks this one does it best. This is Battlecon Devastation of the Indines and the box is huge. We have it in the game store and I keep looking at it and thinking how heavy is that box because it has everything you could possibly need in to get started and to have great fun with it too. Gone are the requirements to pick up more packs, to pick up more this, to do this and that. This has everything that you need. Now, thing to note with this, obviously with a box that size, with that many cards included, you're gonna spend a lot of time shuffling and our reviewer mentioned sort of spending an hour sorting everything out, making sure that everything was fine. However, it was worth it. And that's how good this game is because you can justify that ages trying to like sort through and set up which Side note, potentially controversial. I love doing that. I love sorting everything out so it's all perfect and it's all nice and then I'm ready to go. I'm that person, I make no apologies. Um, but with that, the game then sort of starts you off in rounds, you're feeling really intimidated and you know what, you suddenly then pick it up, it clicks and you realize why this game is so great. The characters themselves are pivotal, so who you choose and how you play them makes a real difference on the game. And this one also includes a multiplayer that lets you sort of fight bosses, do that sort of dungeon crawly element that's great fun, it's just a little bit of everything in a way that we don't often see in fighting games like this. This is like, when we say this is your box of everything, we mean this is your box of everything. Plus a reason why it made a must play grading is that it is easy for people to pick up if you're not familiar with this style of game. There's no requirements for you to know anything beforehand. You can grab this massive box. You can enjoy everything that's inside it, whether you've played a game like this before or not, which in itself is an impressive feat. Up next is Dwellings of Eldervale. Now, I was dealing with Everdell at this point and doing quite a lot of work with that and being able to do the difference was quite difficult. But this is Eldervale. This is a very different style of game uh, that was immediately popular, it seemed, once it came out. Everybody loved it and we were no different. This is basically everything on your fantasy wish list mixed in with worker placement and tile placement and combat a range of really impressive mechanics that come with it too. Now we had the deluxe edition that we reviewed, and um, so there may be some difference in ones that you pick up, um, but ultimately it was impressive. With this game, you can basically split what you're doing into four categories. There's the dungeon crawler, there's combat, there's building dwellings, and there's an elemental track that you need to keep an eye on too. Collect resources, build dwellings, it all makes sense. It's just like the title. Your combat is based on dice rolling, but it is not the total value, but the highest value that's important, which means you can take on bosses with a real hint or a real feel that you might actually be able to beat them, no matter the circumstances that you're in. And whilst the list of sort of board game words I've used is quite long there, basically it's a fun game with loads of stuff that's actually surprisingly easy to pick up, and that is why it became a must play rather than a yes, because anybody can play this game. Our reviewer went so far to say that even if you don't get the deluxe version as we did, the game is still magical. Next up is Wildlands the Ancient. This is sort of a new foray into Wildlands that is super exciting. It's by Martin Wallace um, and it invokes this idea of the Ancients who are age-old guardians of crystals that are now highly sought after by the most desperate in society. The solo mode here really stands out, which is one of the reasons it's been rated so well, because it is fully enjoyable. You have a bunch of scenarios that you're going to play through. It really feels like your decisions make a difference and you're going to have to be careful with what cards you're laying as to what combos you're building as to maximise your success later on. It's sort of the game that we hoped a solo mode would give us when it came to Wildland um, and it's done so beautifully. So it has made our list. 
Then we have the Red Cathedral. Now you may have seen this on a recent Shut Up and Sit Down video. Um, we have reviewed it as a must play because we believe equally that this game is great. Now there is a lot packed into it. There's a lot of little things that you're going to be doing, a lot of decisions to build into the real narrative of the outcome. But ultimately you're an architect attempting to build cathedrals in Moscow. A reviewer described it as sort of an exercise in Eurogame minimalism, which is a really sort of like a tidy system that you're going to be creating something with using sort of base Eurogame mechanics in a way that isn't heavy, which is quite impressive. Combine that with a limited inventory, combine that with the fact that each of your decisions, you may only have one or two decisions per turn, but those are pivotal. You're going to be playing what is quite a tight and exciting little game. You can't always predict what the effects of those are going to be, but that's half the fun. Then you start building once again. And then a side note, unlike other games, it's a much smaller box that you'll receive it in. Many of our must-play games are big boxes, big entries, big shouty style ones. This one just sort of slides onto the table and goes, hey, you know what? I'm great. I'm not going to shout about it. I'm just gonna let you know. Next up we have Thrive. This is a game, if you liked chess and are now into board games, this is the one that you need to purchase. Matthew Vernon reviewed this for us. This is a two player abstract strategy game where you're going to be vying to be the dominant lotus color. You can capture other pieces, you'll use pegs to mark where you've been and what you're doing. And whilst the mechanics steer the game in this case and how the visuals lay out, it's also a really beautiful game to look at. It's a game that you can play quite easily in 20 minutes with a real back and forth of what's happening. You're playing against your opponent. What are you going to do? Are you going to go for them? Are they going to come for you? Are you going to play defensively? Are you going to play... All of the options are there for you in the same way that invokes that little part of our chess brain that goes, oh, I really enjoyed this. This is the way to do the same thing in a new way. In the end, our reviewer said that Thrive refines what made chess a classic and delivers a phenomenal looking and playing game. And last up from our most recent issue is Electric Bastion Land. This is an RPG book that we marked as a must play by Chris McDowell. This is something that really focuses on immediacy and impact. It's sort of a follow up to Into the Odd, which is also by the creator, but not quite as well because it stands tall on its own. You start off your adventure basically told that, hey, you've got £10,000 worth of debt, no means of paying it back. What are you going to do? And it's up to you to then go treasure hunting or go looting or try to find a way out of your circumstances. Instead of a GM, you have a conductor who is also encouraged to take the shake-up path. Don't just go down the route that maintains the status quo or offers a form of resolution. Make things difficult, shake things up a little bit. For example, attack rolls will always hit based on what you roll, but you also need to be aware that if you're injured or you're struggling, your attack rolls are going to be lesser. Because you can't punch someone when you're bleeding yourself. But a big chunk of the book that is great fun to read are the failed careers that your character supposedly had before finding themselves in this situation. These are great fun to read in themselves um, and offer a real variety of different characters and reasonings for what you're doing. They're all a little bit quirky, so they're all ones that you're interested in playing um, and you have several options for how you're going to play those out or what impact they're going to have on your game too. Richard Jansen Parks reviewed this for us and he described it as a riot of bizarre imagination that makes the most of a minimalist rule set. What more could you ask for? So that's been a quick list of games that we have reviewed this year as part of our must play list. These are our top rated games so far. Do you agree? Are there more that you would add? Have you played any of these which have been your favourites? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys um, and let me know what it is that we should be playing next. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe or possibly the other way around um, and head to tabletopgaming.co.uk for more information. You can also read the full reviews of each of those that we've mentioned and a ton of them are available in our game store too so if you want your own copy you are perfectly able to pick that up too i will leave links in the description for you thanks so much for watching have a great day